All right, guys, I'm Rabir. And I'm Matt. And this is Sounds Like on Anderson's TV. <laughs> so we just pulled up in my new car. Yeah. Um, and we thought, you know, what better way to do it? You, you can show the car. <laughs> No we thought we'd head down to Anderson's today to um, see if we can sound like Guns N' Roses. We did, but this time we don't have a budget. No bougie. Sound like Guns N' Roses by busting the bank. Because so many of y'all requested it. Yeah, it should be good. So we're extremely excited. So obviously last time, and as usual, we normally have a £1,500 budget to spend. This and time? Yeah, when we did Slash and Izzy, we had £1,500 each. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, so we get to choose whatever we want. So, obviously the most expensive Les Pauls. Obviously. The most expensive amplifiers. Obviously. The most expensive pedals. And obviously. The best sounds like we've done ever. Ever. Just so you know, it's summertime. It's mega busy in the shop. The living is also easy. Um, <laughs> yes, it is. So we need to pick some guitars, preferably really expensive ones that we'll never be able to afford otherwise. So, should we go Slash first? Let's do Slash. So word on the street is that Andertons do this really cool thing where both Fender and Gibson, they go to Fender and Gibson custom shop and they make a tribute to an artist. So it's no signature model, it's purely a tribute, but it's meant to be designed and built with the artist in mind. So for example, you know, in the past we've done sort of a Dave Gilmore inspired Strat and it looks very much the same. So we did it with Jimmy Page, didn't we? We did as well, yeah. And so I think word has it that there is a Slash one knocking around. Yeah. Um, but so it's not going to say Slash inspired on it because no. that's and not they, what it the is. The series is artist inspired. Yeah. So it's it's picking things that, you know, would be in a similar vein. So the we need artist. to kind of work out where it is because they're all here and they're all very expensive. If I remember rightly. That's the 59. This one, yeah. And this one are both slash. There's are they? Two, there's two versions, and I think this is this is the gadget. This is the one, then. I think this is the one because I know he played a '59 Les Paul. He did, but he, but he also had so he had that custom guitar made. Oh, it's a Chinese knockoff. His original guitar. It wasn't yeah. actually Les Paul. Right. And he had Seymour Duncan's sat in it, as some of you rightly oh. corrected us on the first video. Yeah. Um, but this. Ah, a steel at five thousand three hundred pounds. That's just shy of quadrupling the budget we the normally whole budget. would. Yeah, just for a guitar. Yeah. But saying that, it is a very, very, very beautiful guitar. Yeah, I mean that's like, built to love, perfection, isn't lovely it? Lovely grain, lovely parts. It's just it's beautiful. So Izzy Stradlin, um, first rhythm guitarist of Guns N' Roses, as we did last time. Um, he played an ES. I think anyway, his most kind of archetypal guitar was the Gibson ES-175, but he also played like an ESP Eclipse, uh, like the Sweet Child of Mine video, he played Les Pauls, he played basically a bunch of tellies, um, but I'm thinking that the, the hollow body way is the way to go. However, I do not think that we have any really expensive Gibson ES-175s in store at the moment. So we might have to, like we did last time, I think we were with the Sheraton, we might have to go like 335. 335? Yeah, or something in that ballpark. However, we're going to check the yeah. expensive room. Well, all the mega big dogs' expensive 335s are hung just here. Oh, there you go. So you, yeah. Even more convenient. That's a lovely guitar. Well, to be honest, that, that, is, that is the one. So I am going to pick out this 335 by Gibson. Um, it's got the square inlays, the same as the 175. Um, and, yeah, and, and fitted with humbuckers, again, similar to the uh, 175. Such a nice guitar. It's beautiful, beautiful, and it should sound sound great for those easy tones. Um, and in a cool £3,300. So with our guitars alone, we've spent... £8,798. £8,798. So, 
Word on the street is that a good friend of ours, Mr. Lee Anderton, owns an AFD 100, which is a very limited edition martial amp that they brought out uh, to commemorate 25 years of Appetite for Destruction. It's based on the amp that he used to track that album, but there's a, there's a lot of mystery around actually what the amp is. However, the best bit <coughs> is they did a few different versions, and the one that Lee owns is an actual hand signed by Slash himself model, and it's number two. Two in the line. And, and who has number one? Who has number one? Slash himself. So we've got that. We've got a, a greenback loaded Marshall 412 because we also know that he used greenbacks for a period of time. Yep. So we've got that. It's ready to go. Uh, and we need to find you a name now. Is he? Now there isn't a, like a load of information about what is he actually used. And some say he borrows from Slash's amps, all that kind of stuff. Um, he was endorsed by Carvin for a bit. But a lot of the early photos of around the Appetite era. Uh, show Messers. Um, so I'm thinking if you go that way to Messerland, we can find one. Back up, back up, tell back me what you want to do now. Yeah. Here we have a Messamoogie uh, Mark V. Messamoogie. Messamoogie, Bessamoogie. Um, he actually used a Mark III, I think. Um, we can't get one of those, so the Mark V it is. This is the 35 watt combo, yes. that's the 50 watt combo. True. But it's the same amp, isn't it? It is, but also, as we're doing without a budget, this one's more expensive, therefore, there you go. It's going to sound beautiful for those Izzy tapes. And how much does it cost? £2,099. Woo! I'm going to attempt to get it out off film, because it was really awkward. <laughs> We need pedals. We do need pedals. And we're here around the MXR and other assorted brands, um, Cabinet. I was going to say last time we used the Analog Chorus, the MXR Analog Chorus, yes. and it got us incredibly close to the beginning of Paradise, Paradise City. City exactly. And that's because I believe Slash uses an Analog MXR Chorus. He does, he does indeed. Which is right there. Yeah. So we're going to get that. And we're also going to get some of the signature stuff from Slash. Yes. We don't know if we'll need it, but there's the uh, Octave Fuzz here. Yes, there is. Uh, by MXR, that's a Slash signature product. Mm -hmm. As we have no budget, let's get it. Yep. Um, there's also Slash has a signature wah, which we'll get to. Yep. And we need a delay, and he use, he's famous for using a DD3. Not the same one for his whole career, but he's used DD3s. Well, we'll see if we can get it. We'll see if we can get a DD3. If not, we'll go DD6 yeah, or DD something. D D D D. Yeah, and that should be, I'm pretty sure that's it. We're not going to do the talk box this time because obviously to use a talk box means I have to put it in my mouth. And it's not exactly the most hygienically friendly thing to do. So we'll, we'll skip the talk box. Is there anything else we want to buy because we have no budget and we can make it as expensive as we like? At this point, I couldn't tell you, but if there is, it will end up in the video room. If Anderson sold top hats, that's all i got to say. <laughs> On that note, let's go see what it sounds like. We made it back to the video room. Yes, we did indeed. And it's an exciting one. Today, yeah, it is. It's our number, th it's our third, it I think, is. by busting the bank, um, which gives us the opportunity to pick out ludic ludicrously expensive gear um, to sound like some of your favorite artists. So Mr. Stradlin. Yes. What gear do you have? What gear do I have today? So this is a Gibson ES-335 mm -hmm. and it is the VOS, which in a vintage uh, burst. And it's beautiful. It's basically really, really nice. Um, so as I said before, Izzy uses um, a bunch of different guitars, but the ES-175 was like his, I don't know, the, the hollow body that he kind of has seen using loads. I guess it's similar to what we used in the affordable rig, in the, you know, 335 style hollow body. Mm. And Was it the Sheraton you used? I used the Sheraton time, yeah. last time, yeah. Um, but it's got the square inlays, like the... Um, the 175 does and humbuckers, so you know it's getting us in that ballpark. It's just a lovely looking classy guitar. Like I would love to own a proper 335. They are just 
just amazing. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, it's not cheap. Three thousand three hundred pounds um, <laughs> at today's prices. So yeah, yeah, we've gone a little bit um, cray cray with our choice. So what amp is it you're running this beautiful guitar into? Matthew? I'm running into the Mark V 35, which mm -hmm. is uh, by Mesa Boogie, which you can see just behind me here. It's a beautiful amp. It's a really, really nice amp. And that is a 35 watt all valve, uh, 12 inch speaker loaded amp. It's amp. ridiculous. It's really good. And you can get it in a head version with a cab, mm -hmm. um, but we've got the combo today. And yeah, it's great. I mean, in fairness, because you can find the isolated guitar tracks for some of the early um, A AFD stuff online. You can. And we were just listening to that through your laptop, and then yeah. Matt was just playing a few chords, and it was actually really close without yeah. really trying. Yeah, it does get you quite close. I mean, I think the last time we found with the uh, affordable The RS-15, the Blackstar Star. Yeah. yeah. But we were, I guess, and some of you said, that the there's the Slash um, rhythm track mm. and the Izzy rhythm track. Yeah. Um, Izzy pan to the left. And if you kind of just listen to that, it's a really scratchy kind of mm. like dirty, dirty punk rock sort of kind of sound. A bit more than we yeah. had it, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've kind of tried to go a little bit more in that direction yeah. this time. Yeah, we're running it on like the highest gain stage. Well, mm -hmm. actually not, I think there's four, but we're on number three. And nice. the fourth being extreme. So can we hear some Guns N' Roses style chords? <laughs> It's really dynamic, isn't it? It is really, really nice. And then for some of the more like... Um... But I really it, like that tone. It's a definitely like a more expensive tone than we had before. Yeah. Um, it really does sound good. Well, um, I think considering that your guitar is 3-3 three, three, and the amp, I believe... It's about 2-3, I think. Yeah, so I mean, he's... So we're all in about... 5,600 five, quid. Yeah. So yeah. It is, and that's just a guitar and an amp. Yeah. Um, which is about, what, four times the budget we normally have for the whole rig, so... Pretty much. And it already looks vintage and old school and like it's yeah, got soul yeah. in it that's what i like about a lot of the custom shop guitars with gibson fender and, and other guys is they make them so vibey you know what i mean there's so much vibe in this guitar the way yeah, it looks yeah. it just sounds great and can't can't fault in any way really there you go so let's move on to saul hudson aka slash shall my we? fuzzy haired brethren that's um, one. okay well we'll start with the old guitar so as we were talking about in the shop Anderson's do the uh, sort of inspired by models that they work with the custom shop. Um, it's nothing to do with the artist, but yeah, this is the inspired by slash Gibson Les Paul Custom. And this is the 59 Les Paul Custom. Yep. And this is modeled on his Chinese knockoff Les Paul that he used uh, for mo for a lot of his career, didn't he? Um, well, it's the original, the original Appetite guitar, and it's got the slash Seymour Duncan's uh, fitted in it as well. So. You can't really get, I don't think, more authentic than that, no, to be honest. I don't think so. things I've always found with Les Pauls is that I, I struggle to play Les Pauls comfortably um, but this one is one of the nicer ones that I've played and that's probably because it's one of the most expensive ones I've ever played. Box, yeah. Maybe that's psychological, <laughs> I don't know. Either way, it's really nice. Racking in at an immense £5,300, um, I think it's fair to say you'd really have to be a massive Slash fan or just absolutely adore the way this guitar looks and sounds, or sounds yeah. um, to spend that kind of money on it. So before we get into the details of the amp, uh, we'll go over the pedal board really quick. So we've got the Slash Signature Dunlop Wah, which has its own volume and gain built into it with a special little side switch that you can flick with your toe mid-gig to give you a little extra bit of raunch in your sound. On the top, we've got the DD3, the Boss DD3, which apparently Slash used. 
Yeah, he's used that all all out through his career. Yeah, and it you know for the beginning of uh, Welcome to the Jungle, it, it just nails it, doesn't it? It really does. And we got it running through the front as well, in case anyone wondered. Um, and we got the NXR, MXR analog chorus, which again I believe Slash is known for using for the beginning of Paradise City, and it did the job. So I mean, we used this on the without busting the bank. Yeah. Um, and it did a great job there, so there's no reason not to use it again. And then we've got the Dark Horse, which is the MXR Octave Fuzz, which is the Slash signature one. Yeah, the wah and this, mm. obviously with all its complex switching and, and this as well, are all quite new bits of gear. We're just going for kind of all out appetite, yeah. Izzy, Izzy era, yeah. Guns N' Roses. So, although we got it, we didn't really use it. We didn't, but I will still show you what it sounds like. Yeah. I think we've already knocked it way out of the park, just in the guitar and pedals, before we even fathom the amplifier. We've just had a look at the price point on this amplifier, and it's racking in around... It's 1,200 quid. It was back in 2011, I believe, when Andertons were selling these. So right. it's worth mentioning, these are completely limited edition and completely discontinued by Marshall. You might find some guy selling one on eBay if you really want to get one, but I tell you what, you know, with all due respect, slash aside, what if it's a killer amplifier. It's I nearly swore at how good it sounded. <laughs> and as we said before, this is number two, slash owns number one. So I mean, degrees of separation, if you want to go with me on that. Anyway, we should probably have a quick listen to how it sounds. Yes, let's do that. So this is a, the master is at halfway. It is loud, but let's just give you a demonstration. This is just the amp and the guitar. <laughs> I should also mention... I was just about to say, we should also mention our little secret hidden surprise. Yeah, we've got a secret hidden surprise. Which is And it's a, not Kinder. It's not. It's a Boss RV6 reverb pedal that sat literally behind the amp in the in the loop, just adding a little bit of reverb when we need it. Yeah, that RV6, we, we didn't plan on... We didn't know that the amplifier didn't have built-in reverb until yeah. we plugged it in, so we were like, well, we should grab a reverb. We've got an RV6. It sounds wicked. Yeah. Go. I'm not being funny, <laughs> but I really hope the mics are giving you that because no, in the I room hope, we're I all like. This, <sighs> I hope this comes across well because in the, the the without busting the bank version, I think we got it pretty close. And yeah, I think we got it pretty close, didn't we? As, as, yeah, and slash the sweet child bit for sure. Yeah. And um, this is so much more expensive. <laughs> yeah, it really <laughs> is. It sounds in the room. It just go. You just when beer plays, you know those signature <sighs> bits. You just yeah. go. Well, that's just that's it. That's the record. Exactly. And I hope that that kind of that difference in price kind of reflects in the sound. I really hope so, considering it's like five times as expensive for the whole rig. It, it, yeah, it is. Something it's like that. It's probably like £8,000. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's the amp with the reverb and the Sweet Child stuff, and it sounds very legit. Yep. So let me just give you a couple more quick demonstrations of what you can do. So we put the DD3 in with the reverb still, and you can do that. <laughs> So if I back off the volume to around three, maybe three and a half, put the analog chorus in. Yeah. That's all the hits, all in one box. In, in, <laughs> in one amp, one guitar, and three pedals, you've done... You've done a lot of it, It's yeah. ridiculous. And then, so, I'll give you the wah really quick.
we should show everyone the MXR let's, Octave let's first. Let's play with it because it's actually a really, really cool pedal. It is. Um, so put the Octave on first so we can do that. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. And should we try fuzz on top of that, or is it going to? We may as well. Fuzz? Yes, <laughs> that sounds amazing. I mean, in fairness, we we yeah, we didn't use it for any of the excerpts, but like. It sounds wicked. Yeah, and some of the, I think there was an interview with this tech where he shows where he does have, he does actually use one of these rather than it just being a kind of slash product thing. But it's um, a good sound, I mean, that's again, with the, with, it's a very controlled octave, and that fuzz just gives you that dirty, like the riffing stuff I was doing there. Yeah. And it really it's got, works. It's got both sub, like below and sub. Oh, nice. Sorry, octave up and octave down. Nice. So. can we say at this point really where we've spent as much money as we can really do to try and do the same you know to sound like Guns N' Roses which I mean we had such a good time when we did it the first time and then yeah. being able to do it again without the worry of 1500 pounds to stick under it was like like I said if you can find one of these amps and you want that kind of slightly different martial sound but it's still obviously martial and a really rich Beautiful, powerful sound. That's really impressive. I'm very yeah. impressed. Yeah, I'm so. impressed. Do you? I'm impressed. Do you like it? I, yeah, it's, you I'm, like, I'm impressed. Like I'm impressed. So there you go. Um, let us know how you thought we did. Um, this has obviously been sounds like Guns and Roses by busting the bank. Um, all the gear is in the description box below. Minus, I'll put some information in the description box about the AFD 100. There is actually a page on the Anderson's website we can stick in. Yep. It is discontinued, as we said. Yeah, but good. if you want to find one, good luck finding one, because I imagine all the owners are in love with this amp. I would be if I owned it. Yeah, to be fair, there might not be many for sale if they're this yeah. good. Um, but yeah, let us know what you think. And again, give us more ideas for buy busting the bank, because it's really fun. Yeah, um, for sure. But yeah, I've been Rabir. And I've been Matt. And this has been Sounds Like on Anderson's TV. Bye.